Okay, here are the basic stuff that you're going to be needing for an IV gravity infusion. Uh, the first would be your gravity tubing set, which is your dial of flow. Okay, it depends on the pharmacy. Sometimes they have variations and different looks, but the basic thing is that the uh, tubing is connected to a regulator, which is the dial or a dial of flow. Okay, and that's how you regulate the IV gravity. And of course you have your uh, pick line extension or central line extension set. Um, if it's a dual lumen, double lumen, of course you use two for each lumen. And you have your saline flush and your heparin flush. And these are your caps uh, for your tubing. Because again, going back to that instruction, uh, the IV tubings are only changed Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So if they're reusing it Monday, Tuesday, you got to make sure that you give them instructions to cap the end of it. And I'll show you that in a little bit. And of course, the tip. These are central line tips, uh, ultraside valve. They are called pick tips or central line tips. You change this weekly or every time or every after blood draw. Okay. Okay, now here are the sets again uh, without their packaging, so you can uh, clearly see it. This is again the gravity tubing. Uh, of course, that's the spike, that's the drip chamber, and the regulator is attached to the tubing itself. Okay, now this is where you regulate. If you can say, see the uh, arrow pointing to open, that means the line is open. And the numbers, uh, this is actually a little old, so that's why the numbers are smudged there. However, if you see the numbers, the 200, it indicates the cc's per hour that it runs. So the medication that you're supposed to be doing this, uh, this evening will be uh, Zosin. And it's supposed to run by gravity over 30 minutes. So it's up to you to find out. Um, I don't usually get the information of how many cc's the whole bag is. So if it's 100 cc, you need to run it for a half an hour. So you set it to 200, okay? This way it's, it runs for 30 minutes. If you set it at 100, of course, 100 cc's per hour with a 100 cc bag, that equals to 60 minutes. So run it to 200 or set it to 200. Now this is, again, the extension for the pick line or the central line. Uh, and your flushes, and that's the tip that you attach to the pick line if they 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 usually have one already and you can use that one that they have and that is the cap for that tubing okay now that's where the cap goes for the tubing when they're finished using it you can they you make sure you give them instructions to recap it this way this tip stays nice and clean because they will have to reuse it if you're hooking them up today today is Sunday then they can reuse this tubing all the way till Wednesday and that's when they change it to a new tubing again so the first thing that you will be asking the patient once you get before you get started with the IV infusion is to look at the pick line. Of course, the pick line usually, if let's pretend that this is a pick line and it's inserted to their forearm or their upper arm. Now, a lot of times the pick line is only from the insertion site up to that long. Okay, so if if the patient is the only one doing the infusion himself, it would be difficult to do the infusion uh, using only one hand, and that's the reason why we put an extension so the line can become a lot longer. Because if you hook this up to the line, uh, plus this much, then at least he can hold it coming out of his arm uh, with two hands now, and uh, hook uh, connect to it. So I'll show you how to do that correctly. So let's pretend that this uh, tubing here is the pick line, the patient's pick line, and it normally has a pick tip already when you get there today. Okay, this is where you need to attach this extension so the patient can have a longer line to use. Now, the most important thing that you got to remember in attaching the extension to the pick line is to remove that tip okay this has to be removed 
and this has the, to be attached directly to the tip of the pick line. So you got to make sure that you clamp the pick line of the patient and then you remove that tip and then you attach this line to it and this tip goes to the end of the extension. There has to be, there cannot be a line, tip, and then the extension. You, If you're doing that, you're doing it incorrectly. You have to remove this tip to attach the extension into the patient's pick line directly. Now this is how you connect the line, the extension line, to the patient's pick line. Again, I remove the pick tip and then attach the extension into the patient's line directly while it's clamped so that the blood will not flow back. Okay, and then of course at the end of the extension, that's where you, the, the pick tip that you removed here, this is where you put it. Uh, the tip has to only be there once, it cannot be here in between the lines. Okay, of course, while you're doing this, you have to make sure from the beginning that you've primed the tubing with saline already so that you don't push the air into the patient's line. Okay, so this is the correct way to do it. Um, putting the pick line tip on the uh, at the end of the extension the extension gets to the patient's pick line directly connected and then you can go ahead and open the clamp and then go ahead and flush the line and make sure that everything flows in correctly again make sure to pre prime the line before you hook it up into the patient so once you have this correctly done then you're ready to go with the infusion now if the patient has somebody that does the infusion with him and that person may be a wife a sister or a caregiver will do the infusion every day then you don't need to put this it's not necessary to put the line anymore because someone else will be doing it so you just leave the line as is with the tip here okay no need to do this extension any longer so the only other thing that need less that is left that needs to be done is to hook up the IV uh, into the patient. So of course, obviously, the spike you have to spike into the patient's bag, and then start some dripping into the chamber, and then make sure that you regulate this correctly depending on the size of the bag, and then prime the tubing. Okay, very importantly prime the tubing just open up the line until the medication reaches the end of it and then of course attach it into the patient okay to the patient's line uh, pick line itself so once that's attached you can go ahead and open the line as long as you have set your uh, regulator correctly now again as an example if the bag is 200 oh, it's kind of blurry if the bag is 200, then you set it to 100 cc. Oh, excuse me. If the bag is 100, then you set the regulator and move the line to 200 cc's an hour to run it at a 30 minute rate. Now, if the bag is only a 100 cc bag, then set it to 100. I mean, if the bag is only 50 cc's, then set it to 100 cc's per hour so it runs 30 minutes only. And then once you open up the clip, the clamp, then, you know, it should be ready to infuse. So then that's it. Or you wait a little bit, finish your paperwork, make sure that the patient is not going to have a renal reaction to it. And it should be good to go. Okay. So a couple of other things to remember to teach the patient is number one again the tubing needs to be replaced every Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays only now this is in your packet one of the paper in your admission packet has the infusion sash paper that's the steps necessary for the patient to follow to do the infusion saline flush administer medication saline flush and then heparin flush okay you already know that so make sure you remind them to do that Now, again, change the tubing every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Make sure that they alcohol wipe the tip of the line before they use it all the time for at least 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, and 
the other reminder is to flush their line if their infusion well their infusion I believe the order is every eight hours so they're okay they don't need to flush the line anytime any other time other than whenever they do the infusion because they're doing it a lot so every eight hours should be uh, should be okay now tell them not to remove the most important reminder that I always tell the patients and the family is to never remove this white tip from the pick line okay whenever they disconnect they disconnect from here not here because that's the most common error that they always do and what happens is once they remove this tip the line remains open and of course the blood comes back and then clogs up the line so what I do to remind them a lot of times is I put a little piece of tape and I tape this part of it this part this way and then I tell them this tape reminds you not to touch that part always remove from here okay and every time they disconnect they clamp the extension and they clamp the pick line okay this way it's protected that there is no accident that the blood will come back and clog up the line okay and I guess lastly once the medication is finished teach the patients that once they disconnect the line from the patient's line the IV line then again they have to recap that tip to make sure that it doesn't get dirty because again they're gonna reuse this tubing until Wednesday okay again only change Monday Wednesday and Friday no need to recap this pick tip because it's an automatic shut off valve so there's no need to recap that anymore just leave it as it is and again flush with saline and heparin after the infusion is complete and once they disconnect clamp it and clamp it and that should be it so you teach them how to follow these steps because they are going to be doing the infusion every eight hours on their own okay if there's a problem tell them to call the number for the office and then I will walk them through it if you need to go back tomorrow go ahead and go back tomorrow and reteach them or reinforce the teaching so that they will be more familiar with it and they'll be more comfortable doing it so it's a very simple process with this one in particular because it's just an IV gravity the pump complicates everything from our last problem that we had with that patient even I had a problem when I got there and uh, and did that pump uh, but again this one should be very simple if you have any issues when you get there of course call me later okay bye